Hi, my name is Alistair Chapman and in this video I'm going to take a look at this. This is the Viltrox DCA1 high brightness monitor. It's a 7 inch monitor with an HDMI input and relatively affordable for what it is. So let's have a look at what you get. So in the the box you get this really nice little case for it which is very nice and when we go into the case what we'll find is they supply you with a screen protector which I haven't actually fitted to it yet the wipe to do that um, this is a spec sheet for it and then we have the monitor itself a little Viltrox NPF style battery and a mounting bracket and if I just lift the monitor out for a minute, underneath here, you get a couple of different HDMI cable options. This is a mini HDMI to HDMI and a HDMI to HDMI. Now, the nice thing, one of the really nice things about this monitor is it actually comes with this really nice little hood. Flip this up and boom, it pops out into this really quite usable hood that is excellent actually at blocking out sun and the big selling point really for this monitor is its brightness it's really bright it's 2800 cd per meter squared and to get an idea of what that means in reality i put it up against both the built-in monitors and some other monitors uh, on a job that I'm a project that I'm currently working on and on bright sunny days outside in bright sunshine this monitor is really very very visible compared to other screens and that's all down to the very bright screen so before I put it on a camera let's just have a closer look at it if we start at the top you have a little flap that opens up here and there is a USB socket there uh, and you can use the USB stick for things like firmware updates and loading lookup tables into it. It supports um, 3D cube lookup tables. You have four function buttons and a return button on the top. Moving around to this side, there is a nice big on off switch. Uh, very simple, switch to switch it on, switch to switch it off and this very big rotary dial that controls most of the function. So it rotates and you press to select. Coming around to the bottom of the unit, we have an HDMI in and an HDMI out. So there is an HDMI loop through in, in this. We used to have a standard quarter 20 mounting point with anti-rotation pins. Anti-rotation pins are something that really every monitor should have. It stops it twisting and turning when you don't want it to. Then we have a headphone socket, so you can use it to uh, output to headphones for monitoring. There's a Type-C USB input, so you can power it from USB-C PD, Type-C. There's also a conventional DC input, so you can use an ordinary DTAP cable to power it should you want to. And then on this side, we have another quarter 20 with anti-rotation pins for mounting it. Perhaps you're going to put it um, next to a camera on the side. And then finally on the back, we have an NPF battery tray nice big release button very easy to get that battery off the battery that it came with has a usb socket on it for usb-c charging so you can charge it from a usb-c charger so that's the the basic unit itself and this this great big pop-up hood so which also protects it then so when you're going from location to location this acts as a screen protector and then it just flips up and flips out very easily. Now, in use, one thing that I did experience a few times was that this top bit here would, would get bumped upwards a little bit like that, and then the side bits would come out from underneath. They're no longer held in place by the top. Now, it didn't actually cause any shooting problems, but I don't know, it's just one of those little things they should just sit in there and then they they 
they tuck in and they, they, they're held in place by the top. But if you bump the top or if you're carrying this around a little bit, the top gets pushed up and then they can come out of the top. And I do just wonder if there's a possibility perhaps that there's a higher risk of them being broken when they're like that. So every now and again, I used to, I, I did just sort of pop them back in like that. But I do really like this hood. I, I wish a lot more monitors had a hood like this. It, it's a really great, uh, uh, great hood design because it makes the thing really small to pack and travel with. And then that pops up. So let's put it on the camera. So I'm just going to put it on my FX3 here and uh, using the supplied mount. So it's just uh, goes onto the uh, shoe mount on the camera. And then because of that anti-rotate pin, one, once it's on here, it doesn't, doesn't move. It's not going to twist unless, un, un, when you don't want it to. But there's still enough resistance in this mount. It's actually a really nice mount. Um, that allows you to adjust it so we can push it to where you want, but it's not going to to move about. If I, even if I flap it around like that, you'll see it doesn't really move from where I put it. So this mount actually is a really nice, simple mount, but works really well. So let's turn it on and have a look at the screen. So I've put it on the top of my FX3. It's not heavy, so it's not a problem using it even on a small camera like that. Um, but just to give you something to look at, I'm actually feeding some uh, video from the camera that's shooting me here right now. So let's turn it on, see how quickly it starts up. And what you'll find is actually it does start up pretty quickly. Get a little boot up screen and wait for it. There we go. And immediately you can see just how bright this screen is because it's overexposing my overhead camera here very easily. Now we can change the brightness of the backlight very simply by swiping on the screen and I can just swipe down and we can bring it down to there. And that actually now is just 7%. So um, you can get a pretty good idea of how bright this screen is. Um, it's really bright. Now, in terms of the menus and operability, it's actually fairly straightforward. Um, you can bring the menu system up a couple of ways. This is a touch screen, so I can double tap and that will bring up the menu system, touch the screen again to take it away. I can use the function one button here to bring the menus up, press it again to put them away, or I can press the big dial on the side to bring them up. Now, once they're up, it's a touch screen, but if you don't want to use touch screen, you can use the dial to go through the various options um, within the monitor. Um, and that's certainly one way to do it. Um, for a lot of your functions though, things like uh, waveform histogram, uh, I can use the function buttons um, to, to bring those up. Uh, and they're highly customizable, highly adjustable. Um, this is a really nice little screen actually because it gives you everything that you need. You have your waveform at the bottom, you have a histogram, vector scope and audio meters. And I really actually like the way this is laid out. Um, but um, let's have a look at the other options that we have in this monitor. And we do have pretty much everything that you're ever going to need. It's a very well featured monitor. You have histogram um, and we can choose between RGB uh, or just luminance histogram. And actually one of the nice things is once you bring these up, you can just touch on them to put them where you want on the screen. So you can create the layout that you want. Um, the same with the vector scope, you can turn the vector scope on and then I can put that wherever I want. Vector scope's a really useful tool actually for checking your white balance, um, because if your white balance is correct, you'll just get it on a white card. When you take an image of a white card, you'll just have a tiny little dot in the center of that um, uh, uh, vector scope. So bring the menus back up, we'll turn that off. Uh, then we have our scopes and we have Y, RGB or YUV. And again, we can move that around. Uh, we have the full waveform, and when I turn that on, that's when we get that nice uh, display on there. And we also have the ability to use a 3D LUT. So if I was shooting with S-Log3, I could load a 3D LUT from a memory stick into this. So you put it on your USB stick and uh, you 
open USB and you can import uh, the 3D LUTs into this monitor. If we go down to here, this is now where we have our sort of uh, things like peaking and things like that. So uh, I have uh, peaking, I can turn that up and down to get just the amount of peaking that I want. And it's really nice actually to have this variable level of peaking so you can choose uh, what you want. And actually on this monitor, what I did find um, was either blue or red would be my preference, depends on what you're shooting. And that really helps you to, to see what's in focus or what's not. Um, we have uh, false color. And we've got a couple of different false color modes in this, mode one and mode two. I have to admit, I'm not a false color user. I haven't looked into what these two modes are. Um, I think uh, mode one is, uh, you have your levels up there, is very similar to your um, ARRI false color. Uh, mode two, I, I'm not sure about. Then we have our zebras, which you can use uh, for exposure. And again, we have a slider. And if I put them here to 70%, you'll see I've got some zebras just over the top of my head, which is kind of what you would expect to find uh, for a normal exposure. Um, very quick, very easy to set your level on this. It's one of the nice things. It's actually quite intuitive to use. We have the ability to see red, green, blue, or just the image in uh, luminance or grayscale, um, which can be very useful. You have the ability to have overscan and underscan. We come down to here. This is where we have our markers and you have all the markers that you would usually expect to find on any good quality mar uh, monitor. So if I go here, I can have a safe area. I can bring on an 85% safe area. And then I can also on top of that add perhaps uh, a 235 aspect ratio marker if I want to. You also have the ability to change the scan mode. For example, if you wanted to have a 4x3 scan, you can actually monitor in 4x3 on this screen. Um, normally you'll have this set to auto and the camera will scan according to whatever you feed it. Then we have the ability to quickly zoom into the image by different amounts, maybe help with uh, focus and things like that. Um, we don't actually need to go into the menus to access this. Let me go back to one times because from the basic screen here, you can just pinch um, to magnify and change the size of the image. You get a little box up here that tells you or gives you an idea and you can move that image around in the box with a single finger. So for quick focus checking and things like that, it's really easy. You can quickly go into that uh, function. Then we also have a uh, de-squeeze. So if I was shooting with, uh, let's say a 1.3 times anamorphic lens, I can add uh, de-squeeze to the image uh, very, very quickly. So we have the full range of tools. And then here we have our brightness, contrast, saturation, and backlight controls that you would normally expect from any good quality monitor. So what do I think of this monitor overall? I think it's a really nice monitor. The screen is really nice. It's a very, very bright display. So if you are somebody that shoots outside a lot and you need to be able to see your monitor in very, very high brightness, this monitor may be what you want. Um, the menu system is very logical, very intuitive. You can either drive it using the touch screen or you can use the, the big dial on the side here to go through all the different functions. Um, it has all the tools that you'll need. I mean, being able to just pinch to zoom in and focus is is really great and then being able to to move that around is really handy um, so as a production monitor i can recommend this it is really nice it does have a fan in it but it's not very noisy um, it uh, tends to ramp up when the monitor gets hot slows down when it gets cold but most br high brightness monitors are going to have a fan in it so that's the Viltrox DCA1 very high brightness, super high brightness um, monitor, HDMI in, HDMI out, loop through, all the tools that you'll need, and it's a great monitor.